In this video I finally got around to the H shifter project for some racing. So in this video we'll be going over putting this together and programming it up. So in my previous videos we went over the force feedback steering wheel. We made some um, pedals and we also made a racing handbrake. So to um, finish it off really or complement it we're going to make this manual shifter. So we've been putting this project off for a while because I didn't really want to make something that someone's already made. I'll just be copying. I want to go over with my own sort of angle on it. And uh, I released these photos a little while ago of a design I was using. And on that design I was going to use all effect sensors to pick up the location of the gears. And I uh, worked on that and eventually I worked out that this idea sucks. So I shelved the idea for a while just to think about what would be the best course of action next and it wasn't until I was working on a Xbox controller where I needed to replace one of the little joysticks that I realised those joysticks are just uh, potentiometers, two potentiometers creating the location for the, the joystick itself. So with gear shifts or making your own gear shift there's, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can have a, a switch in each position so it tells the computer in each position which, which gear in, which is a lot of switches, a lot of wires, and a lot of things that can go wrong. Or we can use software to dictate where the joystick is in the world. And when it's in those particular coordinates, we say that's gear 1, gear 2, gear 3, gear 4. And that's exactly what we've done with this. We've just got one of these little Arduino modules, which are cheap as, like 4 or $5. It's New Zealand, so probably 30 cents in the States. And uh, we you, off the shelf part. We just put that on the front and we move the gear stick which moves the um, shaft on the module itself. So um, we could do it a quick way and just put a shaft straight onto the top of this. But I know how rough you guys are on your sticks and it'll snap in minutes because it's only a very tiny little shaft on the top of this. So what I've done is I've just created a linkage so all the weight will go down to a pivot point at the bottom and as you move the gear stick around all the pressure goes down there and those movements are in turn moved onto the sensor relieving it of any of that stress so you can just if you want on this the sensor is not going to going to snap the other thing is that I, uh, it locks in place for each gear so it's got its own sort of locking mechanism and um, so whatever gear you put it in it stays in there it doesn't have a gate on the front uh, if you think it would need the gate by all means let me know in the comments and I can design a gate up. Like the infamous Ferrari gearboxes where they've got the gated shift. Uh, it doesn't this doesn't need one, but of course if you think you'd like it, let me know. So this catches the position by this uh, movement arm. It's got three ribs at the back to move it, lock it in front, in the back, in the front. And across the front it's got a section with a keyway so it can only go in any particular position. And if you only want to use four gears, then you just use four slots. So the arm has two functions really. It just takes the pressure off the sensor at the front and provides the locking motion for the gear stick. If you want a sequential shifter which moves, just moves back and forward and springs back in position, all you need to do is replace this uh, locking arm with a different type. It's just got the ribs are slightly different and it's just got one cut out for the spring at the back. So it can either go back or forward and always goes back to the center. So two options. So this video is going to complement a build guide I'm making. So if you look at a build guide and it doesn't make too much sense, you can refer back to this video. I'll try to cover it as much detail as I can building it. So let's get on with building the shifter. So I've amassed all the parts here to be in the guide and we'll just go through the assembly just in case maybe the guide isn't clear enough for you to follow. Um, so it's going to be a top down thing so um, let's get into it. So the first thing we want to do is grab the top of the unit, which has got the uh, little keyways on it and the, and, the, and the bevel there. And then we want to insert our 6mm threaded rods. And you just put a locking nut on it to give you a bit of traction. Put it in and just tighten it up um, until it's just about it's too, it starts getting a bit tight. You don't want to go too tight because it's not necessary. It's not uh, load bearing or anything. And that, um, if you go too tight, you'll just split the plastic. So you just need to do all four bolts. Once that's done, you want to put the threaded rod into your gear stick shaft. 
you want to go all the way to the bottom you don't want to just go oh let's do that much it'll be cheaper no you want to go all the way to the bottom otherwise wherever this thread ends it'll snap doesn't pay to skimp on that because it'll just it'll just break once you've got that done grab your base put it on top grab your uh, keeper slide that over as well and then there's four holes to screw that down once that's screwed down this should be facing this way so the hole is pointing towards the pointy end we'll consider this the front from now on so once that's done you need to decide where you're going to go um, eight shifter or sequential choose whichever one you want and then on the side of each one there's a screw hole for the springs so you grab your springs and you want the flat side to be screwed down so you want the end result to look like that once it's done we want to screw it into the top of the unit so the bevel goes into the bevel that's on there so it needs to go that way around you just grab each end of the spring and screw it into each hole once you're done you should have something that looks a bit like that it'll move you can move it back and forward so it locks in to position it's a bit better when it's in situ but it's pretty much the concept grab the little uh, stay which goes on top of the uh, joystick module and put that in place that just goes into the front and it's got one of the four millimeter screws that holds it there the pointy bit or the bevel bit goes out once it's screwed in, you don't need to put a nut on the other side, you just set it on there, it should actually bite into the, um, the bit itself and sit loosely on either side because you don't want that to be too tight otherwise it won't function properly. Once that's done, you can just chuck your alloy tubes over the top and then slide over the bottom with the shifting arm. The bit with the circle goes to the pointy end of this and the bevel is towards the back. And then we're not got a screw hole here for the screw to go, the, four, the last four millimeter screw to go into, and that just holds the shaft onto the, the uh, moving arm. So now we've got this a screw in position now, which is holding the gear shaft onto the arm, which connects to the center assembly, and it should actually function now. It locks in position, even with the bolts off. It's cool. It might be tempting to put the bolts on now, but we don't want to do that quite yet. So this is sort of the situation where we're at. If I'm going a bit too fast for you. The guide is definitely covers it in a bit more uh, sort of detail, but this is sort of the step we want to be at at this stage. So at this point, we're ready to start um, putting the electronics in, and popping up on the screen now will be a wiring diagram. So just take a screenshot of that so you know where the all the wires go, and then connect up your controller and your joystick module so okay at this stage hopefully you've got your module all wired up it's got a shaft on the top as we spoke of earlier and there's a hole in the bottom of this unit so we just want to push this back up slot in the joystick unit into the hole available and once that's in you want to screw the sensor down into the base once the sensor's screwed in you just want to make sure you can go through all the gears and there's no sort of binding or it's not too tight if it is, you just need to, you might need to, um, your 3D printer might be printing a little bit too tight. You might need to just maybe sand the inside of the arm a bit, or sand the sides off the side of the uh, keeper at the top, just so it gets moves nice and freely, but this one's fine. It locks in all the positions as expected. And then on the bottom, it's time now to um, put the bolts on just to hold it all together. And last but not least, we just check the uh, gear stick on. This is a 6mm thread, so if you want to make your own gear knobs, do that. I just saw a racing car, I think, in a video, and I saw it look like this, and I thought it was pretty cool, so I made up with some of the ball. It's available in the downloads. So once you've got all the hardware assembled, the last thing you want to do is just route the wire through the front, look in this photo, and then screw down the clamp, and then the controller itself goes on the end of the cable in this little uh, housing, and then you just plug your proper USB-C cable straight into that and plug that into your computer and then we'll start programming it up. Now on my previous projects I've used a firmware called Arduino SFV wheel and um, we won't be using it this time because there's too many too many hurdles really for that firmware and when using this particular joystick or any joystick from a um, Xbox controller one of the axes is back to front so you push forward 
and um, it goes back, which is much good to us, sort of, at all. Also, you need to use that cross-loader firmware loader, which can be finicky sometimes. There's lots of different types of firmware you can use. Just too many issues, really. So we're moving away from that firmware from now on, and I want to build another wheel, force feedback wheel, but I'm using a brushless motor. So if you know of a good firmware I can use for a force feedback steering wheel, please let me know. I'll be moving away from this firmware from now on, and the pedals as well. I'll be going back over the guides and altering those to um, use a bit more friendly firmware. So for this project we'll be using the Arduino and Joystick Library. I apologise in advance for the setup. This computer, this, this camera doesn't want to work with OBS so everything's going to look a bit ugly for a while but it'll be easier for you to understand how to program it all up. So in the download which comes with the STLs you'll also get two script files for Arduino because we're going to program the uh, joystick one file will be getting the coordinates for each gear and once we've got all those down we're going to use another bit of firmware to uh, actually get the joystick to work but we'll start by downloading the calibration file first so it's already in there and we'll see what the output looks like on the screen so here we are with the firmware loaded and we can see above me is the joystick or the gear shift and to my side here is the um, coordinates or where the joystick is at the moment. So the coordinates go from 0 to 1024 and it's pretty much in the middle there. If I move the um, stick across the numbers will alter to reflect the new position. So what I want to do is I want to put on the first to get the first gear coordinates and they'll be 0, 0. So what we want to do is drop that down on a piece of paper, move it down to second gear and the coordinates change from 0 to 10, 23, 24 pretty much. It doesn't have to be exactly right, it's just around about the right place to get this, uh, the coordinates to plug into the code later on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through each key, so this will be third. Those numbers will change, so write down the X, write down the Y, fourth, all the way up to eighth gear. Once that's done, we're going to then upload the actual shifter code. And we'll have a look at the code itself just so you know where to make those changes you need for your stick. So here's the shifter code itself and you want to get each of those X positions which is the first number and put them in here so the X position for gear 1 was 0 and 0 as we saw before and the X position for and the Y position was 0 the X position for gear 2 was 0 and the Y position for gear 2 was 1021. So we're going to go through 8 gears and you put all the X coordinates in the top line, all the Y coordinates in the bottom line. Once they're done you could use, potentially, you could get away with the codes I've already got in there because that's for this particular shifter and they're going to be kind of close but you should best to try and calibrate your own and then just below that we've got a threshold of 10% because the chances of you getting, because there's a bit of play, exactly the right number would be remote so it's going to choose 10% of the number you've chosen so there's a bit of leeway there so if it's within the 10% of the number you program in here it'll decide okay that gear's got enough and 10% provides enough sort of movement but no overlap so you can't go into fifth and it picks third so once you've got all those numbers in there uh, upload them to the Arduino and we should be good to go so now, once that's done, we'll go in and set it up in our game. Okay, so to configure BMG Drive, hopefully you can hear me over the sound of this fan. Go press Escape, and go into Main Menu, Options, Controls, Controls, Vehicle, and here's your gears. So you just click on which one you want to do. So I've already programmed this one up, but we'll just change it. So, for example, reverse gear, click on plus, and then put your gear shift into reverse, and it'll pick it up and apply it. And you just go through each gear that way to assign it to the shifter. And we go back to the game. You can see it down the bottom, it goes through each 
it is. You're done. Well, that's about it for this project. Hope you've got enough details there to get it up and running. All my top tier Patreon members will have access to the files and everything you need to get up and running. So it'll be the STLs, the sketches for Arduino, and any links and any templates and the shopping list. So it'll be a piece of cake to build it all. If you don't want to be a Patreon member, that's not a problem. Just go onto the shop, my Patreon page, and you can buy the whole thing in one bundle. It's super cheap. Don't think like you're buying something, you're supporting the channel. So while thinking about this project, I was going to do another one until this one was done. I've got a sort of backlog of ideas of things to do next. So I need your help to tell me in the comments which one I should do. It's either going to be a button box. So a button box for your sim rig, and you push the button, and you can program the colors behind each button, or a card dealing machine, so you chuck cards into a machine and it rotates around and deals the cards out. Maybe you'll want that when they're useful, I don't know. And the other one would be a arcade tablet. So if you look at my previous videos, I made a, a Defender arcade console sort of thing. And I was thinking of making the same thing, but in a tablet form. So if you leave me down in the comments which one of those three you'd like to see next, we'll get onto it. Meanwhile, you can like and subscribe. Or you can buy the guide here. Thanks for watching.